Hello everyone, and today we have something a little bit different. As I was driving for quite a bit today, I got a check engine light. So we're going to go ahead and take our OBD2 scan tool and go ahead and plug it up and see what's going on. And the port is right on the driver's side, right under the steering wheel. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this bad boy in. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and climb in the truck since it is raining. And let's go ahead and turn this thing on. And let's see what we got. So yeah, we still have the check engine light even after it's sitting for a while. So now we're going to go ahead and pull up the app on our phone. And there it is right there. It's going to be blue driver for this particular device. Let it load. It's going to take a second to connect, so go ahead and give that a few seconds. And there we go. Now I'll go up to read codes. And just to do our due diligence, let me go ahead and click on all system modules. And this part, we're just going to wait for about two to three minutes. And we're almost there, right at 100%. There we go. And we'll go ahead and acknowledge how many miles we have. And right at the top, let's see, we have P0455. So when we click on that, that's EVAP system leak detected. And what's also cool about this, it also provides three common fixes that can be done for this problem. But for now, let's go ahead and clear out this code, and we're going to see if it's going to come back after we clear it. So right now, it did stay cleared, and we'll go ahead and drive this around some more and see how fast it takes for it to come back. And before we drive around, let me go ahead and check the gas cap. So I'm going to open her up right here, and go ahead and unscrew it. I'm going to do a visual inspection, and it looks like the gasket's in really good condition. That's a great sign. Now, please keep in mind, even though the gas cap looks good, there are internal components that can still fail. But for now, this does look pretty good, so we'll just go ahead and tighten her up. There we go. Close her up, and let's go for a drive. So while I'm going for the test drive, let's go over the fundamentals of how the EVAP system works. The evaporative emission system, or your EVAP system, is used to reduce hydrocarbons emitted into the atmosphere from your fuel system. So basically, it filters out all the fuel vapors from your fuel tank. And this is done as fuel vapors are coming from your gas tank, they go into the EVAP canister, which basically has charcoal in it, and again, that acts as a filter. And that goes out through the EVAP canister vent control valve. So as your vehicle sits, this vent valve is going to remain open. This is a normally open valve. However, this operation does change as the vehicle is being operated. As you accelerate, typically this vent valve will close, and then you have the fuel vapor go back into the intake manifold through the purge volume control solenoid valve, and this will open and close as it's needed based on the ECM. And this valve is typically in a normally closed position, so when your car is shut off, you're going to see this valve is closed. So when you're troubleshooting, just keep that in mind. All right, so now that we know what conditions to expect, let's get back to troubleshooting. And after about 30 minutes of driving again, our check engine light did return. So let's go ahead and start by doing a visual inspection of our EVAP hoses. And we're just doing a visual inspection just to look for any pinholes or cracks throughout the whole run. And of course, we'll start from under the hood, then we'll work our way down to the driver's side, all the way under the vehicle, and then back towards the rear wheel. And so far, everything looks pretty good. Next, we're going to try another form of testing. Let's go ahead and tick off the cap for the EVAP service port. That way, we have access to our EVAP hoses. And let me go ahead and bring the camera in so you can see what I see. And right there in the center is a valve core. We're going to need to remove that so we can go ahead and pump air in the system. So let's go ahead and grab our valve tool and remove this valve core. Now this core uses left-handed threads, so you're going to have to turn it clockwise to remove it, and it only requires a few turns. Now we're removing this because we don't have the EVAP service port adapter that typically the dealership uses, so we're doing it a little bit different, and this actually ends up coming out cheaper. So let's go ahead and pull out this core, try not to drop it. There we go, and we'll go ahead and set that aside. And now we can break out our very cool pump kit. Now this thing actually is pretty awesome because it has two functions. It's a vacuum pump, so if you want to bleed your brakes, as well as a pressure pump, which is what we're going to use it for. So we have the handheld pump. We're going to set that part aside. And I want to see if I can grab the other items I need. So I'm going to grab two long hoses. And then we'll go ahead and grab the canister. And then we're going to go ahead and grab this very large right angle attachment. And that's what we're going to use to plug right to the service port. And let's go ahead and attach everything together. So that right angle adapter is going to go on one end of the clear hoses. And it's going to slide right over the service port. And see if I can get it on there. Very nice and snug. Awesome. Then we'll take that canister and go ahead and plug the other end of the clear hose into that end. And then we'll plug the other long clear hose on this end. And I'm using the long clear hoses. That way it gives me a lot more wiggle room. So as I'm doing the inspection of the EVAP system, I can get around while pumping it. And this is where we're going to try something a little different. So I have these shot glasses and aluminum foil. And I wrap the aluminum foil around the shot glasses. That way when I put something flammable in there, it doesn't melt through the canister. So I'm going to take those shot glasses of aluminum foil and just set it right in the canister just like that. And then I'm going to grab some incense. And it's just a small pack, very inexpensive. And I'm just going to go ahead and light probably about three or four of them. So let's go ahead and get that one started. And we'll get the second one. Third. And let's get one more. And number four. And then we'll go ahead and set those right in that aluminum foil with the shot glasses. And let's get number three. And last one, number four. 
Now let's go ahead and put the cap back on. Screws on very easily. I'm gonna pull that off just so I can show you what we're doing. So as I'm pumping this, you can see smoke coming out. That's exactly what we want. Got ourselves a little smoke machine. And I'll plug that right back up. And then we'll go ahead and start pumping smoke into the system and see if we could see any smoke leak out of any of these hoses. So we're gonna do the same thing as there earlier, but as we're pumping, we're looking for smoke. And since it's an incense, you can also do a smell test. So you're gonna also try to smell, see if you can smell that incense. And so far under the hood, it looks like we're pretty good. I don't see any smoke come out whatsoever. So that's a great sign. So now let's go ahead and follow the lines under the vehicle. So we're gonna go under the driver's side of the front wheel. We're gonna look at these hoses. So far it looks pretty good. And we're gonna continuously pumping as we're inspecting these lines. You're gonna look for smoke and try to see if you can also smell the incense. And looking down the lines, they still look pretty good. Now just as an FYI, this is a little different how we're doing this. Typically when you take this to a technician, they use a computer to close the purge valve at the very end where the canister is. So that way you can only see the smoke come out through the hoses, but we're not doing that because we don't want to add more than one PSI of pressure throughout these hoses. So this is going to go ahead and start venting out through the canister out of that purge valve we talked about earlier. And so far we're continuing our test. I don't see any smoke whatsoever. So far this looks pretty good. I smell it just faintly right here, but that's expected because it's going right through the canister out of that purge valve. And just doing a double check, so far everything looks good. I don't see any issues. I don't think these hoses are compromised. So let's go ahead and start putting everything back together. So now let's go ahead and detach our cheap smoke machine and let's go ahead and reinsert our valve core. And then we'll go ahead and tighten this back up and we're gonna go counterclockwise. Again, these are left-handed threads, just as a reminder. And we're just gonna tighten it up until it's nice and snug. And obviously we'll go ahead and reinstall our cap and make sure that's nice and snug. Very nice. So now let's go ahead and work our way back to the rear of the vehicle where the canister is. And this is right behind the wheel. And I want to get my camera in here. That way we can get a better look what we're looking at. Because unfortunately, when you're doing this job, you're not really going to be able to see this part. So right there where my finger is, that's going to be our vent valve. That's what we're going to need to remove. So this right here, let's see if I can get my camera right there. It's kind of tilted in a weird way, but that's what we're going to be looking for. So I'm trying to show you different angles. That way you can kind of see what I'm seeing because you're going to be doing most of this by feel. So we're going to go ahead and turn it counterclockwise and this should unlock that vent valve. And once you unlock it, you kind of need to wiggle it out. And that's what we're going to do right here. And just to provide a little more room, I got this drain filter right here and I'm just going to go ahead and remove it from its bracket. I'm not going to disconnect the hoses. I'm just going to go ahead and lift it off. That way it gives me a little more wiggle room in there because it's kind of tight. So I'm going to go ahead and lift that off or at least try to. There we go. And what the heck, this pressure sensor right here, let's go ahead and disconnect that harness right there as well. I just don't want to go ahead and snag it as I'm removing everything out. And we'll go set that aside. So now we got a little more room to work, get my hand in there. And I'm going to go ahead and pull this vent valve out, and we're going to start removing the hose. And this just pulls right off, so just give it a slight turn as you're pulling it. Come on. There we go. And then we'll go ahead and disconnect our wiring harness. And let me go ahead and change hands. That way I can get my thumb really in there. It's just awkward positioning, that's all. And give this a little pull. There we go. And so far, nothing damaged. That's a good sign. So now let me crawl from under the truck and we'll do some tests. So I have a 12 volt source right here and I want to go ahead and plug it right up to this vent valve. Now keep in mind, this is something I put together. However, if you want, you can go ahead and use your car battery or I heard you can use a nine volt battery. I haven't tested that part, but this is just something I had laying around, but all it does is just give me 12 volts. So I'm gonna turn it on and off. And you can hear this valve open and close. And this is the new valve I'm testing. I'm just showing you that you can hear it click on and off. So that one works perfectly. Now these do look slightly different, but the function is exactly the same. All this is doing is allowing airflow and not allowing airflow. So when you turn it on, it shuts off airflow. When you turn it off, it allows airflow. That's all it's doing. So let me go ahead and plug up the old one. Very nice. And we'll turn this on. And I'm not hearing this valve open and close. So it looks like this might be the issue. And per our scanner, it did mention that this particular part might be a problem. So let me go ahead and do one more test. Let me go ahead and hook up the smoke machine again. And I want to go ahead and puff smoke right through it so you can see if there's airflow or not. So our smoke machine does work. And we'll get the old valve first. And this is kind of awkward handling, but I'm going to try to show you. So right now it's showing airflow. I'm going to turn it on. Still showing airflow. Turn it off. Same thing, on, okay, so right now it's not obstructing airflow. So it looks like that might be our smoking gun right there. So let me go ahead and hook up the new one and show you how it's supposed to work. So we got airflow, turn it on, no airflow, off, same thing. So that one is working as expected. So that right there might be our smoking gun. So I think we're gonna go ahead and swap these out. 
And before we install our new part, let's apply a nice thin coat of grease right to the O-ring. Now just as an FYI, when you remove this part, the manual does say go ahead and throw out the O-ring and throw in a new one. But instead I just bought the whole new part just because it was so inexpensive. So anyway, let me go ahead and put some grease on there to make it nice and thin. Very nice. And then we'll slide back under the truck and go ahead and reinstall this in the reverse order. So I'm going to start with the wiring harness and that should click right in. There we go. And then we'll go ahead and do some twists and turns in our valve in position. Now keep in mind, you're not going to see a majority of this just because my hand's in the way and it's just awkward positioning. But let me get that in the hole. There we go. Turn it and locked it right in. Beautiful. And it feels nice and snug. So let's go ahead and get our hose in position. And again, this is going to be by feel. So I'm going to go ahead and install the hose. And all you have to do is pull that right on with a little bit of twist. And that's what I'm doing right now. And it feels right. Yep, that feels good. So now let's go ahead and reconnect our pressure switch. So I'm going to take that harness and just plug that right back in. Come on. Come on. There we go. Snap that right in. And then we'll go ahead and reattach our drain filter right to the bracket. And I'm trying to do this while holding the camera, so bear with me. Come on. Come on. And there we go. And now for our very last step, we just need to clear that trouble code. So I left the scanner plugged into the truck, so I'm going to turn it back on. And make sure all of our other dummy lights go away. And there we go. And we'll go ahead and open up our app. Wait a few seconds. We've got to let it connect. And this only takes a few seconds. It doesn't take long. Instead of read codes, let's click on clear codes. And we're going to click on pending and confirm codes only. And it looks like our code is cleared. Let's look at our check engine light. And that's gone as well. That's exactly what we expect. That's perfect. And it was awesome. They were able to find our smoking gun part during the whole troubleshooting process. That made it even better. Well, if you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe.